Welcome to Debrief. I, Deepika, will take you through the highlights of the webinar Multi Speciality, which was recently organized by IMA Mumbai branch, IMA CGP Mumbai sub faculty on 18th October 2020, and sponsored by DigiShield. In continuation of previous webinars, which have received an overwhelming response, we back again to address the different cases and update the knowledge in every field. DigiShield, in association with IMA Mumbai branch, has arranged an interactive session to enlighten ourselves and clear the doubts of any in the following sectors of the medicine. The session was kick-started by Dr. R. V. Pathak, who is a consultant diabetologist in Raheja Fortis Hospital, began to speak on the topic Effective Cardiometabolic Treatment Beyond Metformin and for Indians. He began to address the oral anti-diabetic agents, which are extremely common in treating diabetics along with their dosage and side effects. The DPP-4 inhibitors and SGLT-2 inhibitors were differentiated by him and also provided a vast knowledge about the two. To understand why after metformin, CGLT-2 is or Glyptin's efficacy is only considered. Let's dive into the video. After metformin, SGLT2s or Glyptin's, where only efficacy is consideration, you have to consider overall type 2 diabetes population. It is as effective as usual dose of SGLT2s. Second point, see the HbA1c, whether it is above 8.5 or less than 8.5. Less than 8.5 SGLT2 efficacy is lowered due to lower ambient glucose and gliptins are usually numerically more effective in this population. TKD, I have already explained that gliptins may be significantly more effective in SGLT2s. In elderly population, the same reason gliptins are more safer than SGLT2 inhibitors if the GFR is less than 60. Dr. Ian Pinto, who is a hematologist and medical oncologist in Sir H. N. Reliance Foundation Hospital, began to address the topic, a decade of Eltropobag in ITP, the only oral TPORA he started off by suggesting ITP care, which was in practice for the past 20 years, its limitations and the alternatives in place. He discussed in detail about why the change arrived in ITP and the newer therapeutic options which are available for ITP. He concluded by providing the points which one should keep in mind. Let's just know what they are. Just to focus on the conclusions you know, of today, um, Eltromopac has definitely made a big impact as an oral tablet you know, in chronic ITP. Uh, it's been tested for around 10 years almost and, you know, unrevealed, no unexpected risks. Um, amongst all the modalities in ITP, that's a great response rate, one of the highest response rates at 88%. And it's even effective after failure of Romiplostin, which is a subcutaneous, uh, you know, injection. Some patients, you know, even, uh, you know, when they're off therapy, almost 33% show sustained responses um, there are some dietary restrictions, as I mentioned earlier, but I think the key, the key to this drug is one, it's a tablet, it's dosed once a day, not many times a day, so it's easier for patient uh, compliance, and it does not cause immunosuppression, like a steroid or rituximab, there's no immunosuppression, especially when you're looking at COVID times. Uh, we need a drug which does not co cause uh, any immunosuppression. Up next, we have Dr. Suresh Advani, who is holding a position as a medical oncologist in Sir H. N. Reliance Foundation Hospital and Research Center, decided to speak on the topic, breast cancer, a heterogeneous disease. He outlined what really is breast cancer and the different subtypes. He gave a detailed description of luminal A and its nature. He shared the various drugs and its positive as well as negative impacts on the body. He suggested that the well-known chemotherapy has been replaced by various effective drugs which address the problem quickly. To understand the concept, let's just hear what he has to say. Firstly, I must say that we are now in the era of immunotherapy. Next slide. I think uh, particularly in the 
triple negative breast cancer, the immunotherapy has been shown a good result. So friends, my purpose of today's talk was to just tell you and inform you that the breast cancer cannot be considered as a single disease. And it has to be, the treatment has to be personalized for individual patients. So we must do all the investigation to give the best of the treatment to these patients. Dr. Ashok Mashur, who is a consultant pulmonologist in PD Hinduja Hospital, began to address his chosen topic, community acquired pneumonia. To understand the problem better, he outlined the problem and its long existed history. With the help of few case studies, he began to describe the crisis and the solution of the same. He guided the importance of risk assessment and the procedure for the same. He suggested to have an initial treatment strategy for the outpatient management. He concluded his speak by suggesting the following. As I said, though we have a COVID pneumonia, which is rampant, we should not forget community acquired pneumonia because what we are seeing now is there is a lot of association between the virus and the bacteria. And quite often, the COVID infections can lead to secondary infections, which need to be treated, otherwise they could prove fatal to the patient. Followed by Dr. Paresh Vaid, who is currently holding a position as a consultant diabetologist in Kohinoor Hospital, Hindu Sabha Hospital began his lucid speech on the topic smooth sailing versus rough patches. He began by explaining a smooth journey as a controlled glycemic level and minimum treatment hazards. He discussed in detail regarding the broad spectrum of OAD classes and the importance of a personalized approach to treat, treat the patients. He explained the experiences that he shares while treating the patients. Let's know what he suggested in the conclusion. The home message is metformin is the perfect base. I use it the first. I think all of you do. Then generally, gliptins are generally safe. As I told you, there are some concerns, some age, some things which you should not use gliptins. There's also a little side effect profile, but in less than 1%. So they are effective against all age groups, all hb ncs diabetes duration, sulfonylureas, very effective in the beginning, but later on they don't work. Pioglitazone, again, are very effective, very durable, but I'm not able to use them in a few patients because we will not be able to talk about that now. SGLT2 inhibitors, they are very, very good. We have been using them for some time, but in patients with EGFR, uh, with, a, with a compromised EGFR, and with patients with, uh, with an HbA1c of less than 8.5, especially in elderly patients, I'll be slightly more mindful of using an SGLT2 inhibitors, considering the side effect profile. And of course, the best decision is made by us, depending on all the parameters. As I told you, I would take the age of the patient, EGFR, HbA1c, and the cost incurred for therapy before starting a, a drug for a patient with type 2 diabetes. Dr. Vaibhav Bagaria, who is currently holding a position as hip and knee specialist surgeon in Sir H. N. Reliance Foundation Hospital and Research Center began to speak on the topic, current strategies in, in management of knee pain. To understand the knee structure better, he began with the basics of what constitutes knee. The causes of the knee pain were discussed in detail along with the diagnosis of the same. He discussed various treatment methods along with the case studies. To understand the myths, Let's hear it from him. Of course, there are myths related to the procedure. Most people believe that while hip replacement is very successful, knee replacement is not as successful and experimental. There is also a lot of myth about the longevity of implant, which people believe lasts only 8 to 10 years at the mass, 15 years, which is again untrue because the modern implant design sometimes lasts up to 30 to 35 years. And that it cannot be done in the obese patient because of the weight. Of course, the cost is a subjective issue. Um, and people feel that after knee replacement, they have to be bedridden for a very long time. And last but not least, people believe that knee replacement means that you are actually completely taking out the knee and putting in new knee. The correct term should have been knee resurfacing because what we do actually is just to remove and put in the new implant 
of the one off surface mr dipen mehta coo dg shield took the chair where he discussed in detail how dg shield is enabling doctors to safely and securely practice these testing types of covid 19 Digital can conduct a quick and effective COVID-19 carrier risk screening of every patient before visiting clinics. To watch the entire video, please visit our website www.digital.me and click on the debrief menu.